I don't have to pull it towards me. Again, it is up to just on. Thrive, yeah. How frustrating. <laughs> Technology. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Happy 100, and we're late. <laughs> of course, it would happen on the 100th, right, Dana? So. Oh, so hello, hello. Well, our show, it's just for the record. It's vanished. Disappeared. <laughs> they all disappeared on us. The world wide web. OMG. OMG is right. Hi, Shayla. Look at what I have today. <laughs> Got my Black Pearl Magic bag. <laughs> How are you? Happy 100 to us. Thank you. Hello. Um, well, what can we say? Happy Mother's Day. Hopefully you all had a beautiful Mother's Day. I think last week we forgot to wish you a happy Mother's Day. We talked about it, but we, we talked... may not have wished you a happy Mother's Day. <laughs> we droned on it for quite a bit. <laughs> but hopefully you all had a great Mother's Day. Yes. Um, gosh, we have some exciting stuff to share. 100 is a big milestone, and it's so hard to like it even is a big milestone. encompass where to start, where, how we even got here. I can't even imagine. <laughs> um, I know. Isn't that crazy? I remember being at TNA and talking to Melissa and Lisa. Who I miss so much. Who had just done their first podcast. And they said, oh, you just have to do it. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. But at that time, it was, it was um, so frightening. We were recording it, of course. So, I mean, you could record it. You didn't have to do anything with it if you didn't like Thank it. Thank you right? for the ice coffee. You're welcome, Diana. You didn't have to do anything with it. So, I think that's a big advancement for us, Diana, that we went from recording them to just going live, having the nerve to just go live. I know. We've overcome that fear. We overcame that fear. That's true. That's true. So that was a big thing. But that's really such a vivid... I don't know if you remember that. I remember going up the escalator with them and they were saying, just do it. <laughs> I vividly remember the first podcast. Oh, I do. We were sitting over there. On there a couch. There used to be a sofa back here. Yep. And, uh, you know, we took such great care in setting up and getting everything ready. We only to be, do. Of course. Oh. We always do. Only to what? And, you know, for those of you who have given us constructive criticism, kudos to you. Thank you for we remember the microphone today. <laughs> yes. Thank you for keeping us in check. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really appreciate I'm sure Pam does, too. When you guys say there's always room for improvement. Right. And I appreciate all the comments. But I remember the first podcast, <laughs> all the messages that came in. Sit up straight, tighter bra. We can't hear you. <laughs> we can't hear you. Put more makeup on. <laughs> that's you know, that's what it's about, you it's know. A that's major learning. Curve. But again, we're not, you know, we never, you know, listen, we, we we're not as evidenced by today's dilemma. We are not technological experts when it comes Try. to this stuff, right? So basically what happened, the reason we're one of the reasons we're late. <clears throat> I entered all of the information, all the show notes, and there are no show notes right now. The so. links, the links. Yes. And she went to next and they disappeared. Everything vanished. They and this went happens into every now and went, again. Wouldn't it be funny if we ended it and they were there? That would be so awesome, but I highly doubt it. <laughs> Maybe. So my know. recommendation to you. Oh, Kathy is on. Hi, Kathy. Uh, Kathy from Not House. Hi, Kathy. How are Hope you? Hope you had a wonderful weekend. We were totally it looks like missing. you had lots of fun. Dinah said she had FOMO. Yes. Yes. Totally digressing here and going in another direction. I had FOMO. I would like to go to Not House, but I yes. don't have FOMO <laughs> for walking you, in the rain at a fiber festival. That didn't that doesn't appeal to me. But we miss you. We miss you. Um yeah. So what was I saying? Oh, the show notes. So take notes while we're talking. Um, but there will I, be show notes yes, afterwards. Yes, I should we'll actually, can I borrow this? Sure. I should take really good show notes so that I can well, you know what to put, in. put everything back in. There you go. Um, if memory serves me well. Yes. We should start by introducing ourselves. <laughs> well, that's an easy one. Go ahead, Diana, you start. Um, Diana, you can find me at The Knitting Place on Instagram, Ravelry, and Facebook. I am Pam, Pam Sapp on Instagram and Ravelry and Pam Sapienza on Facebook. If you don't already subscribe to us, please subscribe. You can hit um, 
I guess there's a, a bell or a, a subscribe button yes. and you can ring the bell if you want. I think you get notifications when we go live so you don't have to wait. Um, sometimes we often say we're going live at a certain time and then we're unfortunately late. we're late. Yeah. Things we happen. Things happen. have very good intentions. Things yes. <clears throat> uh, what are you wearing? I am wearing the, um, don't tell me. I can't remember the name of it. The Felix cardigan. Thank you. I we what the word was in my head. Fox. It was Fox. I don't know why it was close. It's beginning with an F. The Felix cardigan from um, who's it from? Amy Christopher. Thank you. <laughs> made it's out beautiful. of made out of uh, Hudson and West Forge, held with Superior, which was like a cashmere blend of a kind of like a mohair. Would you say? Yes, it was a mohair alternative. Right, because I'm not a big mohair girl. Sorry, I have the pen sticking. Oh, I should be taking notes. Um, I wanted to say, so in my original set of show notes, I did put down the Felix cardigan and that she used um, Forge. And we had a couple of customers who knit it in Forge only. Without the mohair. Without the mohair. Right. I haven't finished mine. Shame yeah, but you're me. close to being done. You're close. <laughs> That's you're very close long, to being languishing done. whip. There you go. Um, I paired mine with mohair, and if there is something that you're interested in, whether you're pairing it with a surrey, yep, a mohair, yep. or just keeping it in forge, you know, if or using a thicker yarn, for instance, you know, what would be wrong with doing this in luft? Oh no, you can we, do it in luft, and you don't have to hold anything with it. That would be a very nice idea. Yep. The Luft colors. That would be nice. That's a pretty palette. Yeah, it is. It is real, real pretty. So you um, could do that. But anyway, that's what I'm wearing. And as you can see, Dinah and I are in stark contrast today. I'm still in winter mode and she's in spring mode. <laughs> and you must have left the house early because well, I left the house shining, before finally. eight o'clock in the morning. But it was chilly. This it was like feels like 42. And don't forget, I have to stand outside for 40 minutes. So when it's 42, you know, the one thing that's happen this year with weather at school is that oh it's going to be 60 you get outside it's like 50 and the wind is blowing you know so i could always take something off if i'm hot but if i'm cold you know there you go can't put it on so anyway so that was why i dressed the way i did today and i thought for sure now we never like we don't, connect we don't, in the morning. we don't consult with each right. other right but I thought for sure, oh, you know, we got this huge delivery of Sanders <laughs> coming in. She's definitely going to wear her. Um, you know, I actually wasn't sure if you would put on the anchor summer shirt or maybe wear wild clover and put on a cardigan. I need to wear wild clover. I really should. I haven't worn that in forever. I love so, that. So I figured, oh, she's probably going to wear wild clover, you know, assuming that I would wear the <laughs> anchor. I mean, this is like the stuff that goes on in my head. <laughs> trying. You should have like, texted me. Well. By I the could time have I'm getting dressed, you're in school but already. But I could have changed when I went home. Yeah, but I was still like, I'm just coming out of bed. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I woke up late today. Well, there you go. Today, I was... Next week. Yeah. Next week, hopefully, we'll have... I said to my daughter yesterday, can you believe the temperature for Mother's Day? Oh, this weekend was Crazy. ridiculous. And you know what? I also said to her, it's planting. I was in my daughter's Who backyard. It's Mother's Day. And usually she puts in tomatoes and she puts in spices. Nothing. There's like nothing. Nothing is planted. I don't know. For me, Mother's Day was always a, you know, when I had the house and I would plant, you know, totally. there's certain like Mother's Day is azaleas in bloom, at least in New York, you know, right? Yes. And Mother's yeah. Day, you could have your impatience in and you're planting My like that, planted. right? So, but the weather here has been so, it rained all day Saturday. It was miserable. Which I'm sure like it rained down in Maryland, right? For the sheep and wool. I honestly thought the skies might open up and clear, but like Sunday was still dreary and gloomy. It was. And you know, it's the it kind of rain I said to my husband, it just doesn't stop. It just rains all day long. It's annoying. There's like a drizzle, there's a mist, there's this, there's that, but whatever. Excuse me. You're right. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, it, it was sad. It's funny because the kids, no, actually it was my husband. He's like, oh, you know, let's say planting for, for Mother's Day. I'm no, like, why don't you guys ask me what I want to do? Yeah, exactly. This year I really didn't want to plant, <laughs> no. so it didn't matter that the weather right. wasn't, you know, right. cooperating. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you'll like this story. Speaking of Mother's Day, my son-in-law, Tyler, who you heard me talk about, said he was going to cook brunch. 
and he would have, you know, my, my us over and my other kids, you know, and whatever. Oh, they all come? They all came. He didn't tell me who was there. Yeah. Daniel. Well, Daniel, I told you I was up until two o'clock in the morning knitting, right? Yeah. At 630, my phone pings. In the morning? Daniel. Yeah. He's taking off from uh, South Carolina. He went to Myrtle Beach to golf with some friends. And yesterday was his birthday. And he had always said right along that he was going to fly in and come out. He lives in Brooklyn. We're on Long Island that he would come out. But, you know, you know, they, he didn't, you know, it's hard, you know, with the, you're flying, is the flight on time, you know, all that kind of stuff. So he messages me that he's going to get on the plane. He's landing at 10. He'll be coming out for Mother's Day. So then I had to scramble because I didn't have a cake. So I had to make a cake. Right. No, and you'll one... appreciate this. I have to tell you a funny story. I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt. Okay. What were you going to say? No. Did you make the box cake? I made a box cake because Katie's Meredith loves box cakes and her birthday was in April. Okay. So I know she loves a box cake. So I said, I'm just going to make a box cake. And Daniel, Daniel wouldn't care, you know what it was. So I made a box cake. And what was the point of me telling you this story? Oh, so, so Tyler, I, so I leave the house. I get a call from my husband who'd gone ahead to pick up bagels we need utensils, he's calling me, telling me. We need utensils, like disposable utensils, you know. Are you supposed to stop and get them? I had left the house already, you know. And like, he's that's okay, I'll get them. Yeah, that's right. You will get them because it's Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> so then I get make my way to my daughter's house. And as I'm getting there, she's pulling out. She's picking up the other kids that came out on the train. Oh. But now they need cups they need hot cups and cold cups now this is what happens god bless my son-in-law he's wonderful but men don't think you know if you were serving you would think okay this is my food how am i serving it do i you know what do i need totally. right right so i said to my daughter let me story. let me run and get it since i'm in the car so then i went one store they had none I had to go to another store i'm thinking to myself this is mother's day Right? How many stops have you made before? You... <laughs> did you actually? Did you leave the house to get it? I I had just pulled up in front of her house. Oh, so, it so been I was in the you. car. I said I'll go get it because yeah. they were cooking I mean, inside. It's easier, but that's the point. The point is, you know, like I don't. I'm not every husband is that way, but you know, they don't. They don't see the whole picture like a, a female. Well, kudos might. to Tyler for really like he made a the whole wonderful thing brunch. He made a wonderful getting, brunch. Yeah. Right. Kudos for sure. So my neighbor told me, cause she called me yesterday uh, to wish me happy mother's day. So I told her I was making a cake for Daniel. So she called me, she said, you know, we have a word for, for you in Yiddish, I guess it a is. Yes. <laughs> a balabusa. <laughs> and she said, you know what that means? I said, well, it sounds like I hate to say it, but it sounds like, no, it's not a ball buster. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean? You can a explain. A ball buster is one who gets everything done. You just get it all done. That's, like, but in I what think kind that's of way? What it means. Um, you know what? Maybe someone, Yiddish, someone, someone my, can tell us. Maybe, maybe someone could share. She said what? you're a ball. What is it? Ball booster. Ball booster. Yeah. Ball booster. A booster. Ball. No boost. Booster. I don't know. I don't know. Actually. <laughs> don't really speak Yiddish. I picked up all my Yiddish. Is that Yiddish? Yiddish? That's Yiddish. It's Yiddish, right? Yeah. Not Hebrew. You've picked up all your Yiddish at the shop, right? I, I not have, because <laughs> Yiddish is an Ashkenazi thing. Well, I so I said to I said to Meryl, my neighbor, I said we were laughing about it because a lot of times I, I will use words like Dinah and I will say this all the time that when we're looking at colors, it looks schwa. <laughs> That's such a great word. What does that mean? Like it means boring, blah, uh, <laughs> yuck. Not exciting. <laughs> At least as we know it. That's so funny. I love those Yiddish wo Yiddish words, which we've said before. But yeah. go ahead. Tell me what you were going to say, Dana. I don't remember. I think I was going to share my story. Which so we, was? So the kids, you know, I guess I've been venting. I think this whole <laughs> podcast of talking about Mother's Day ahead of time has got me to express myself at on the home front. Well, that's good. So it's funny. This is like therapy. <laughs> Seriously. Um, <clears throat> so I guess it's been coming out like the kids are asking me now, well, what would make your Mother's Day perfect? And it's a, obviously it was a little late because I was having all the company <laughs> over. But I think it was Friday night. I was talking to Sophie and my husband and we, mm -hmm. we were talking about what we needed to get. So we talked about the grocery store. Mm -hmm. So we actually made a list mm -hmm. of what we had, what we needed. Mm -hmm. So we tried to plug through what we could on Saturday, what needed to get done on Sunday, setting mm -hmm. up the table, mm -hmm. what we needed, mm -hmm. glasses. We didn't do disposable, so that was easy. But it really did help out. And I have to say, 
getting all that out in the open ahead of time was enabled no, me to delegate. Them, right, exactly. Which is something like Sophie was like, Mom, how do you do this every time you entertain? Well, there you go. And I was actually explaining to her that it's not like it's in layers. It doesn't happen right. the day of. Right. You're prepping already for a week Well, you're before. anticipating you're, exactly. because you know what's coming and you know it's not something you do right. all at it's once. It's like little baby But that's steps. experience. Yes. That's experience. Right. So it's Sophie's training. <laughs> she was so crazy. tired and god bless her she really helped out so sophie if you ever watch this podcast thank you thank you <laughs> and thank you danielle she helped with the errands jake was in between different uh you know his girlfriend's house and our house so he wasn't around and zach was up at oh, he was up he wasn't home yeah he didn't come home and it's so funny because the kids are always so good about surprising me and um, he called me in the morning. He's like, hey, mom, happy, you know, happy Mother's Day. And we were on the phone for a bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, I bet you he's going to surprise me and come. And, and then in the afternoon, yeah, I was like, you know, guys, I'm totally guilty. I really think that I thought Zach was coming and Sophie broke it to me. And she's like, no, mom, not this time. <laughs> <laughs> Just supposed to show you. Yeah. Anyway, it was still a lovely day. Okay. So. What's ready? new? What's ready to new? talk about yarn? What it was to well, what are you wearing? I told you what I what I'm wearing. What are you wearing? Oh, I didn't cover that. No, you did. I wrote it though. I'm wearing the Anchor <laughs> Summer shirt. Um, it's designed by Petite Knit. It's knit in Sandiscarn, the Lena, which is the worsted weight version. Uh, let's see. Oh, geez, it's too blown out. No, hold on a second. I can do this. There it is. Much there better. it is. That's much and better, this is yeah. the new color, shocking pink. Um, we got a beautiful delivery on Friday. Yes, we it's did. It's been scoured through, but we still have yarn and we're going to share everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe I used six skeins for my anchor summer shirt. Correct. And that's also what her peacock tea was knit made in as well. Did so you say there. peacock? I didn't even see that <laughs> sitting there. Here's my peacock tea. And that's light aubergine. Yeah. I'm wearing the terracotta that's color. That's terracotta, right? correct. Someone just ordered those two colors. Oh, isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? The gal, the, the, what that order we just did, she ordered those two colors. Did we package it? Yeah. Was that last one? Oh, that's funny. I don't even remember. Um, yes. So, Lena, mm -hmm. uh, back in stock, lots of colors. We have new colors to share. What did I want to tell you? It took six skeins to knit this, six skeins to knit the peacock tee. And I think Snowbell is actually on the mannequin right there. Yes, that's in she also was six skeins too. Six skeins. And Diana's, if you were to measure, she's forty around, finished right. bust forty. I would say it's got a finished positive ease about forty four. I know I made the my size when I made the anchor to was 44. extra large, which was finished forty four. Which I don't know what the other one. I think the reason I went for forty four is the one beneath it was forty, and I thought it would be too tight. I probably could have done the forty. But this is definitely not a 40. No, you must have did. You did yeah. the same size I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember having that conversation. That was during the pandemic. We did that knit along. And people are looking. I think I just knit tighter <clears throat> than you. And people were looking at the size, saying, well, I'm not an extra large. I said, it's not. Don't look at the label. Look at yes, the finished it's really bust about measurement. The size, the I'm not an extra large either. But I know that when I measure my bust around, it's 40 or 40 and a half. And when I look at the finished sizes, if I'm knitting on gauge, you know, I know where I have to be. So I said, you can't look at what it says you are because, you know, I don't consider myself an extra large. No, I don't either. But we find that in some of these tops. That's just the way they 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 label them, you know. Right. It's like when you go shopping. I don't think a 44 shopping. bust is an extra large. Don't worry about the number. Just, <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is. I don't know. No. <laughs> I delude myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're our, our worst critics. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. As long as it fits and you like it, who cares? Exactly. Exactly. Um, so that's what I'm wearing. How about whips? Are we talking about whips? Yeah. So let's talk about whips. Um, do you want to start? Well, let's just get this one. Since we don't have anything really to show, it's a lovely tea. Yeah, I really, I did want to actually mention, do you have a tape measure on you? I'll go get one. I'll get it. Okay. You take I'll, out just, I'll take my lovely tea. So the lovely tea, I'm still working on it. Uh, it's our knit along that we're doing with Kimberly McElinden. And it's in progress. And we have our third Zoom this Thursday. 
Unfortunately, I have not yet divided for the sleeves, although that is what we were up to the last time. Were so we divided for the sleeves on the last Zoom or by this Zoom? Last Zoom. They were, in other words, if we were on schedule, we would last have been Zoom. divided for the last Zoom. Correct, because oh, she talked about she talked about dividing. Um, so I did want to just mention, you know, when there is back of the neck shaping, mm -hmm. you know, I think she says knit to a certain point and then divide for your sleeves. When you have short row shaping in the back of your work, although this is the beginning of my round, which is the back where my short rows happen, mm -hmm. that's not technically where you want to measure the depth before shape, uh, dividing for your sleeves. <clears throat> so you actually want to turn it around and measure it from the front neck edge and measure downward. It's going to be a fun piece to wear. Yes, it is. I can tell. I have to say her little detail, Kimberly, Oops, kudos to you if you're watching. Her detail for what? The sleeves. I absolutely, I oh, absolutely the, the, love um, it. I'm getting the, tongue tied. The uh, puffy shoulder? Yes. Yeah. So this is the front. The back is where my beginning of round is. This is the front neckline. Mm -hmm. I would measure from, from here mm -hmm. down. Right. And that's how you measure when you need to measure. And you don't go like divide. this. You don't go you like don't this. You don't stretch it out. <laughs> right. I'm holding it up because I want to show, do the demonstration. Mm -hmm. But technically, I would lay it flat. I would not pull my work. Mm -hmm. And I would just measure. Now that I have this out, this was fun There's to knit. I know it's it's tedious. Um, um, I mean, not tedious. It's just knitting, knitting in the round. But there's something to be said about that. What? Knitting in the round, just going around on a, it's a thinner yarn on smaller. Maybe I it's the it yarn. Very therapeutic. Yeah, it's very very much fun. And I do love that that timing thing it that we were talking about. <laughs> it doesn't matter that it's on a small needle and No, it does. No, no. I prefer this actually. Yeah, I like this. I agree. I like this. But in any way, so this is mine. Same thing. We're almost in the same place, I would That's say. That's hysterical. So and what I was talking about is like, I love the detail of the puff sleeve, the rouging up top. I'm trying to get a good picture of it. And then she does this shaping. Can You want to show yours? The shaping where um, for the sleeve. Oh, oh there. Look at yeah. this. And it just brings it right in. So you get your... You see that right here. There's like this little decrease section that kind of brings it in it's not a raglan shaping you see it there right under my finger I yep. it's adorable it's pretty right? it shapes yep. this i can't wait to try it on yep. <laughs> anyway so that's where i'm at with my lovely tea so of course we were distracted this week right diana <laughs> greatly distracted. we were distracted because of well, a few different things but you know, you had, well, you were distracted because your daughter was home. And so you were doing a lot. Plus you have the test knit that you've been doing. Yes, I do have that with me. You have that with you? Why yes. don't you show them? Oh. I noticed Diana's making progress because the bag is getting bigger. Yes. That she's and I in. have it in my beautiful Black Pearl Magic bag. Thank you, Shayla. Um, she was working on a test knit for, um, I want to say Natasha well. Hornby, but is it Moon what? Moonstruck Nets. What's in my head is Moon Drake. I know Moon Whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of moons out there. <laughs> so this is my Fluxus shawl. I will show you a bit of it. Here it is. She hold it the other way, like that's on top. Okay. Yes. The last time so, she showed it to you guys, she was like just around here. Yeah. Right? So, so I did another wave, wave, a serpentine, another short row section, mm -hmm. and I have, I'm on my third. Oh, there are three of them? Three. Oh, jeez. I still have more to go, believe oh, it or geez. not. So this is what I've been busy with. And that, how many? You have more of them to go? Yes. <laughs> how many serpentines are there? I think it's four, but Ooh. I don't remember. Well, that's I fun. don't have it committed to my Get mind. Get into a rhythm. I'm using Finnell by uh, Rama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else can I share with you? I think she's publishing at the end of the month, and I feel horrible because I've really been MIA in the test net. Yeah, but you still have time on it. Yes, I'm not. I'm not that far. I th don't think I'm that far behind. But you know, you no, get to the so. end of the shawl, and the the stitches, the, the stitch count increases. increases. Of yes. course, of course. Uh, so That's certainly, lovely. the rows are taking a lot longer. I'm enjoying the knit. She is a genius. The way she's figured this out. Just a genius. That's I love the short designs. Rosette. I find that every design, there's always something in there. That's... I'm always learning something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, she's got these like short row sec sections, and it's creating a really fun.
pattern. Good. So stay tuned. Hopefully we'll have them ready soon. Lovely. Um, for a whip, what else do I have? I Well, I don't really, what I, I think we'll, we'll do that one later. The one that's for the. Um, do you want to talk about this? this one? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. So as promised, we were talking about <laughs> another hat, guys, about knitting a bucket hat. So that's what I did. I did. I, I knit. Uh, I knit a bucket hat. So for those of you people who guys who don't want to crochet, not that you don't want to crochet. Maybe that's not your thing. You don't know. How for to those crochet. of you who've asked for a knit this? version. Hold on. Put this in the back. Did that sound like virgin? A knit version. Version. So anyway, <laughs> so what we did, what I did was I held the two um, cottons together. Like I, um, no, I didn't do that in the other hat. But um, it's, I guess you'd say it's sport weight um, cotton, the Rowan cotton glacé. And we marled it. You don't have to marl it. You can hold two together. But it was lovely, It's adorable. Right? It's a quick knit. I love it. It came nice, right, Diana? It came out really nicely. That's okay. So now I'm thinking is this size fit you, right? Yes. They fit you. So I think I might do a larger size because there are people who do have larger heads. Sure. And this that is That looks it. adorable on you. So was Michael, it easy to make? Yeah, but I didn't think it was difficult. You know, when you're first making something, you know, I mean, I've ripped it out several times, you know, because you want to make sure that the gauge is right and that the, you know, that everything is, is proper, but. Yeah, I love the fine. little detail that you did on the edge that you did it in a solid color Correct. cast on. It's kind That's of great. Out a little bit. But there, it there it is. There you go. Super anyway, cute. so um, anyway, if anybody wants to test knit this, feel free to um, DM me on uh, Instagram. It's adorable. And you can DM me. So what I mean, size I, needle? Uh, seven. Nice. A seven with the yarn doubled. So that's not bad. So if you want to test it, just message me. And I'd be happy to have you do that. And, you know, I mean, we could have this. I could have this out fairly quickly, but it would be nice if someone else test knit it to see. <laughs> How awesome. Yep. They so asked for a knit go. version and you already got one well, out. There it is. How There's amazing. Knit version. There you anyway, go. so that's that. And uh, that's, what, that's what I have on that. So I was doing that. Okay. Um, do I have any other whips? I spoke about the lovely tea. I spoke about that. What do you have I here? crocheted a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rotor wrap. Good. I think that's what we're calling it. The, the rotor wrap. The rotor wrap. So this was the first in the green. It's like I an olive. did the second one in a purple. I didn't steam or block it. And interestingly, I was so worried about everyone playing yarn chicken. I had plenty left over. Yeah, see. So go figure. Yeah, that is um, odd, isn't it? Very odd. So this is, should I put it on? Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, it's all <laughs> the purple. Goes. It works. Here it is, guys. Are you attached? You're, yeah, but that's I am good. attached. I'm sorry. The rotor wrap and crochet. There you go. It's being test. As we speak. Tested on as we speak. And we also have a knit version coming no it's here ta-da there you go here's the knit slightly different because it's got a little pattern still in has there. sparkle on it it still has sparkle but you don't need to do it with the sparkle this Oops. one is slightly bigger yeah there you go Let's see if i can get this on right <laughs> this would have been perfect for the weekend with all the rain <laughs> <laughs> and here it is i don't know that i'm gonna have this one tested well you had it knit you had yeah yeah i actually had my i had a knitter knit it for me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was a modification from a shawl that we had so it was kind of fairly easy to write and here it is there you go a knit version so we have it in knit did that also crochet. use two skeins or? it did oh, this took two skeins isn't that interesting um, this Show is, them how to wear it around your neck, though, Dana. Oh, you can also. Oh God, look what I did to but my you hair. You can, you can wear it around yes. your neck. I think that that's perfect. Here it is. If you want to wear a little accent around your neck, you can certainly wear. I it. mean, you could wear these around your neck too. You can. You know why not? Why not? I don't know that it, it's it nice when something has it. No, no, it's a not a shawl. Purple, no. It's just like a little neck wrap. Right. 
Well, the nice thing about it too is you may not want to do that in the summertime, but if it's in the spring or the fall, you can wrap that around your neck. Oh, for sure. As a little accent accessory yeah, to your like wardrobe a or a little whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's nice. I like that. So two versions. I will get them typed and written and published. I'm still waiting for my crocheters to help me out and publish some more, uh, to share some more photos and make sure that the pattern is okay. And then we will publish it. There you go. So that's that, that for whips. I don't have any more whips. I have one more whip. Share. But it's, it's um, up there. I put it in this one. This is. They're a new saying they love. Oh, Skin Cocaine is on too. Hi, Kathy, Elaine. We have people from all over South Africa. Oh, my goodness. This was. Um, Pam, they're asking, is your hat unisex? Oh, yeah. I would, I would definitely think so. It's unisex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, yeah. nothing masculine yeah, or sure. feminine yeah. about a bucket. Hat. I mean, as I said, you can you can you know hold two strands together and make it a solid color if you want. Yeah, you it know, doesn't even do have to be moral. Yep, 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 yep. Um, so this cast on is was inspired by the um, what well, wasn't really inspired by, it, but it's um, using this the is, Lena, right? Yes, and this has been in Pam's queue for a bit. <laughs> I can't I have not much to show you, and this doesn't tell oh, you. Much. Really do but Diana, here, this is this is it's called the uh, Loop T, L O O P T, and just love this piece. It's by not going to remember what, what is the name? Hiromi Nagasawa. Thank you. And it's just how gorgeous is that? Look at this detail right down the side. Correct. Isn't how that nice stunning? Is that? Now, and is the that back on both is sides? lovely. I don't need a, you know what? I was just thinking the same thing, but I'm going to see if I can show. Well, I don't have how cute is this, you guys? Look at this top, the sleeveless top, and it's got this like cable twist right going down the side of the sweater. I think that is so elegant. It's nice. And she says um, here that. Um, Let's see, how can I say this? I have my contact lens, I can't see. It's knit from the bottom up. It has a square-shaped silhouette. Uh, Eye-catching ribs on each side of the, of the body cross under the sleeve opening to go so, around the armhole. So it's each side. That's so amazing. As if the arm were going through a loop. It says extending the front, excuse me, extending the front body's V-neck to the upper part of the back to join. Uh, blah blah blah. It says if you wear it with about four inches of ease, um, it's polished and sophisticated, or you can have a more generous ease and it gives it a more relaxed look. But I think it's a great piece. I saw this a while ago, and there were projects on the Ravelry page that were made in Lena. Yeah, and I do lo love knitting with Lena. Just get the oh, I'm sorry. No. Um, so here, I was going to show you the, I was going to show you this, because I think this is a good, if I can make it larger. Look at the back. Beautiful. Bone, but I have to show you this. Go closer. Look at the back, that neck on the back and the, and the, those cable, that cable on the side. I just think that's lovely. Anyway, so that's what I cast on. It requires my size there, I believe six sizes. I'm doing size three, which is a 44 finished bust. This is a new color that came in from uh, San Nisgarn. San and I don't have the label here. They're the saying back. it sounds like it's cutting out. Oh, is it? Is the sound okay? Thank you, Jackie, for letting us know. Um, it's pink sand is the color name and we could... Yeah. There you go. Do you have a label? No, I don't. I don't have a label. I'll get one off the table. Hold on. It's color number 3542. It's one of the new colors that came in from um, Santa's Garn. Look how pretty that is. That's beautiful. Yep. And um, they're saying they can't hear anything. Audio is very choppy. Yep. It could be the connection, the, uh, the internet. Is that any better? We're sorry. There you go. I anyway, wonder. so that's my cast on. Should I click this? I don't know if I click it. I don't know. Can you hear us now? Don't Better, know. by the way? Okay, good. Maybe something's wrong. Okay, so 
that's, that's beautiful. It. That's my cast on. That's fabulous. And, tea, and hopefully next week I'll have some more to show you. And it's pretty. Hiromi Nagasawa. That's absolutely awesome. You know what? We created kits. Why don't we show we them the kits that we, we did have? We create kits. Um, they're right here. Hold on. Let me just move this. Oh, I thought it was the tray. No, oh, the no. tray. Those are gotcha. the, the colors. Um, we did a couple of neutral colors. Um, the first one is, what, what is that? Beige. I'm looking for the other one. Okay. They're, That's this, light beige. This To me, this has a little bit. It's kind of color number 2331. It has more of a, um, a pink hue to it, but it's still beige. As opposed to Dinah's. This one is beige, which is color number 3021. And this is, I think, Cafe Olay. Yes. 3042. You can see that has a deeper color to it. So there were three beiges that we did. Now, this color, 6080, if you go on the um, project page, uh, it used to be the first project that came up was made out of Lena in this colorway, and it really does look lovely. That's the slate. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful color. So you can see it's what it's a soft like. black. Mm -hmm. So some people don't like to knit with black. That is a great alternative. It's very chic. Right. And it, I, it's very, it's I mean, called it's slate, but I wouldn't call it gray. It's like a very dark, dark charcoal. It is correct. gray. Well, it is gray, but not like a flannel gray. Yeah. Right. It's correct. gorgeous. It's deep. You can it's see from dark. what I'm yeah. holding up here. This is the color Dinah is wearing. This is the terracotta. That's. 43. So you could see. 23? Oh, I'm not sure. No, 42.34. Getting so confused. <laughs> That's 43.23. 43.23 ah, is pink. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice pink. So this is your pink. Oh, nice this is pink. your terracotta. terracotta. So you can see the difference there. Yeah. Now this one in my hand is a, probably the most popular shade of pink, which is Serene. It's kind of like a lavendery pink, very pale, very light. Um, this is a pink too, right? 3511. Again, that's it's powder pink. Powder pink, yeah. Isn't that a very pretty? soft pink. And this is Dinah's peacock. Yes. I don't know why they call it light, but it's light aubergine. There you go. 4631. And we have two new colors, actually. We'll show you the new colors later on, but this is shocking pink. That's pretty. What's this called? Jelly bean green. Look at that, guys. Look at that great green. There you go. And then we have uh, this is 7521. And I think this is a dusty light blue, believe it or not. Although yes. it doesn't look like it. Doesn't it doesn't seem to be, but it is. Mm -hmm. Well, you can see this is color 5930, which is definitely, you can see a light blue. Yeah. So if you put that next to it, this has a gray hint to it, the one in your hand, Diana. Don't you right, think but so? it's not the pearl gray. No, it's not the pearl gray, no. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Um, this, one? this one, yeah. And last but not least, we have 8521. It's pretty green. Yep, it's like a dusty light green. Yep. So these are all kits that are on the website for the loop tee, which we think is cute. And again, I'm doing the 44, the third size, and I am using six skeins. It calls for about 660 yards. If you wanted to do size um, four, it would be, I think the next two sizes would be seven skeins. And then the final size, the largest would be eight skeins. And it goes up to about a 54 inch bust. So... Nice. It's nice. And that's it. Very pretty, Pam. Loop T. So that shows you a new cast on and, and a new kit. There you go. <laughs> I should write new cast on. Mm -hmm. That's a good header. Yep. Awesome. Thank you, Pam. You're welcome, Diane. Uh, what do we have next? Let's see. Did you cover all your whips? Yeah, that's okay. I'm done. Uh, All right. So I got then, nothing else. Let's <laughs> talk about what's new in shop. Okay. Here we go. Awesome. Let's do this one first. Okay. Okay. So we've covered certainly enough of the Lena. Uh, you heard about the anchor, the peacock tea, the snowbell. Pam certainly is casting on, uh, cast on the loop tea. Well, we got new stock and this is the new stock as well as new colors. So we kind of visited most of them. Uh, 
I think most of the colors are available. I think this is the pearl gray. I don't yes, know that we did is. this mm -hmm. one. 3820. So this is your pearl gray, and that's right next to the dusty light blue. Um, this is the light almond 3011, which is also very pretty. Not sure if we made a kit for that. Any of these colors would be fabulous, and you can buy them all a la carte if they interest you. So, or or if there's a project in your queue that requires Lena. Yes, there are the so, yep, now is a good time. We've been out for a while. Um, we are very happy to have it back in stock, believe it or not. Some of the colors, I think, are already sold out. Is that correct? Or if they're not sold out, they're very close to being sold. Yes. <laughs> so if there's a color that you want, please don't hesitate to check out the website and, I don't know, look at your queue. Now's the time. For those of you who have ordered or placed orders in the past, if you didn't get a call from us, it just means that the color did not come in in this delivery. Correct. So we apologize. It's about supply and demand. And unfortunately, they didn't get all the colors delivered in. We were but we're hoping to get more in in June. One color Anyone have any questions? It's a little late. Good to catch you live. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for all the well wishes that we've hit 100. We greatly appreciate it. It's so nice that you're here. And this is, you know, Pam and I were reflecting and we were thinking about, you know, there's a community here. We, we've gotten used to sure. coming on and chatting with all of you and interacting and the exchange and the comments. And it's, we've come a long Slowly, way. Yeah. It's nice that we're not scared to be live. <laughs> exactly. Who would have known that we would have been live on exactly. our 100th podcast? Exactly. Definitely not. Not me. So there's a new yarn. Speaking of Santa Scarn, in case you didn't catch the live on Friday, there's a new yarn called Tick Lena. So we've had Tin Lena, which is the fingering weight version. This is Lena, which is the worsted weight version. And now there's Tick Lena, which is the heavier version. Mm -hmm. um, it's about uh, heavy worsted weight, Aran weight. It's about 14 stitches. Uh, is four it? and a half to four stitches per 16, inch. Yeah, yeah, 16. 16. Yeah. You can certainly knit right, it. You could have, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. Um, I think they're calling for a size eight needle. The yarn is the same uh, same base, 53% cotton, 33% viscose, and 14% linen. So you still have the same blend. Mm -hmm. It's just a different gauge, and there's different yardage. It's got, I think, um, 65 meters, which is about 70 yards per skein. I think it, yeah, I think it's um, 60 meters, Yeah, which would be about right. 65 Not yards. right? So when we went live on Friday, we were scrambling a lot of people. And Mary, this is a shout-out to you. <laughs> um, you asked for some suggestions. So here we are. Um, you asked. We listened. The first one is Bryn. It's designed by Allison Jane. It's this lovely tea. Not sure if you could see it, but our friend Beth McDonald Stone did knit one and we admired her top. It's got a lovely boxy shape. Believe it or not, it's got um, a finished measurement that's uh, they're requesting or suggesting 11 and a quarter inches of positive ease, which is quite a bit. Not everybody loves to wear something that oversized. And our suggestion is always find a garment that you like the way it fits and measure it. And that's the size that you should target to knit. So, you know, we are always so grateful. You guys are very kind. You always pay us compliments and you love the way our sweaters fit. I could speak for myself. I usually go for um, a size that's within two to four inches of my actual bust measurement. However, my Deshane, which is a oh, lovely yes. garment, and this is another alternative for the yarn, mm -hmm. that had a 60-inch finished bust. The beauty of that, that um, sweater is that it had great drape, mm -hmm. and because of the drape, you didn't feel the 60 inches when you were wearing it. Mm -hmm. This garment here is very much like that. It has a lot of positive ease and I probably would not knit a size that's about 40 to 44 inches in positive ease. I mean, four inches of positive ease. I will likely go to a larger size because it does have a little flow. 
Um, however, there are many projects for the Brin T, B-R-I-N. You can look it up on Ravelry and you can see lots of finished objects. Mm -hmm. So that would be a wonderful suggestion. That's just one. We're going to show you the colors. Thanks, Pam. This is Cafe Ole. This is beige, almond, ice blue, dark blue gray, shocking pink, jelly bean, green, and olive. So All available go. in Tick Lena. And if you want to purchase the kit, you can look up Bryn. You can certainly go to, um, you can purchase it a la carte. We have a lot of suggestions for you. So grab some pen and paper uh, and we'll share what we have. There are some, we should start with the freebies. I would no? do the freebies. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Sandus Garn has dropped a couple of patterns and these patterns are going to be free with purchase. So if you make a purchase a la carte and you want to purchase one of these items, just leave a comment and we will email you the pattern. This first one is called the Stella Purse. This looks like it's a knit. It's using Tick Lena. That which one takes only three skeins. That's it? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Just double check with yeah. that. Pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, approximately 19 by 27 centimeters. So it's not a big piece, but it is suggesting only three skeins of yarn. Circular needle, um, seven to eight millimeter. Interesting. That's an 11. Wow. So it's not knit to a tight gauge, and uh, the suggested gauge is actually How 12 stitches. How cute would that be in these colors? Well, of course, so it's adorable. done in jelly bean green, which yep. is here, but look at the shocking pink as well. Super cute. Lovely. Lovely. Uh, I am noticing that they are crocheting. I think the band is actually crocheted. So this particular project does Although require... Although you could probably knit a band. I mean, you could knit a band up. I'm sure you can. Yeah. An I cord. Yeah, whatever. I mean, I mean, you know. It's basic crochet. So this is really, you could probably YouTube it if you don't know how. The Stella Purse. Three skeins, free pattern. If you purchase a la carte, just leave a comment suggesting the, um, the pattern. Next up, Another freebie. It's funny how this is also in the jelly bean green. This is called the Augusta singlet pattern. It is sized from extra extra small to 3XL. Bust measurement. Now I'm sorry, these are in centimeters. 83 centimeters to 125 centimeters, ranging from five skeins through nine skeins for the largest size. Looks like it's done in all knit. And for this particular garment, they're suggesting a size eight and nine circular needle. So the gauge is quite different. Cute little tank, Augusta singlet. Next up, the Florina T. Were these, did you find this on Ravelry? This one was on Ravelry. If you, uh, this one was on, but I found it if I went, I searched the yarn, the Tick Lena. There were about 12 projects. And this was up there a few times. Which is called the Florentina? Yes, I think. the Florentina. Florina. No, no, Florina, Florina T. Florina, there you go. So it's funny because this actually looks like something very similar that we're going to recommend. Right. Um, so it's an it's sized extra small to 3XL. They have it sized using nine skeins for the smallest size, ranging up to 16 skeins for the largest size. The sizing on the bust measurement, 103 centimeters. Which is a little more than 40. And it ranges up to 137 49. centimeters. So that is the sizing. Extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, 2XL, and 3XL. Um, again, Florina T. Pam spotted it on Ravelry. So if you're looking for the number of skeins, we hope it's there. I did not check the Ravelry page. You can always call or email, and I'll be happy to get back to you. Again, a free pattern with purchase. Leave a comment if you're purchasing for this garment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, is this the last one? I think so. Okay. So the last one that's a freebie, this is actually crocheted. It's called the Isla Bucket Bag. I 
Are they both crocheted or is one knit? No, they're both crocheted. They're both crocheted. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's the Isla Bucket Bag, and this particular bag is calling for ten skeins, believe it or not. Well, it's crochet. Crochet Crocheting usually, skein, yes, yeah. takes more yarn. They're using a 4.5 millimeter hook, and the size of the bag is 25 by 37 centimeters. And there you have it. Free pattern. If you're interested in this, please just leave a comment and we will email you a copy. But wait, there's more. <laughs> we did our homework. And, you know, a lot of people did request some pattern suggestions for the new yarn. Uh, everyone's super excited about it. We had a wonderful response. Uh, this top here is called North Fork. It's designed by Melissa Shashwari, Dandelion Knits. Um, here it is. Super cute. Now, of course, you can knit this in one color. I love that it's featured here in three the yoke is basically in a solid and then it's striped in the body. Believe it or not, there is a long sleeve version. Uh, this is sized from 32 inch bust to 60 inch bust. It was originally designed using Kestrel, which is a lovely substitute yarn. So if you're looking for great inspiration, you can search Kestrel on Ravelry and substitute Tick Lena. The only thing I'm going to suggest is that you mind your yardage. Kestrel has 76 yards per skein. So when you're substituting, you always want to make sure you purchase enough yardage. There's only about 65 yards per skein on the Tick Lena, and that will mean you need a little more yardage or a few more skeins. Do you want to cover some? Yeah. Go Keep, going. Keep going. Okay. You're on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Keep going. Uh, is this getting to be too much? Let me know. I can stop. This is Aria. If I'm giving too much information, I could just, should I stop oh, or keep going? Just, okay. Yeah. This is Aria. It's designed by Lisa Boram, B-O-R-A-M. Again, it's knit to four stitch, uh, 16 stitches to four inches, basically about four to four stitches to the inch. Yardage range is about 410 to 730 yards. What you see here, I thought this was cute. She does have a striped version. Mm -hmm. You can knit it all in one color. I happen to like this one. Some people need a visual. The main body is in one color, and then they used a very similar color, or you can use a pop color right. for the Plus trimming. Eye contrast. Yes, yeah. mm. this is it's low, cute. but I like it's that one. very cute. It's nice. Love that one. Next one. This is cute if you're looking for. I mean, this is this. like a you could layer. Could be nice over a dress. Over a dress, over a bathing suit, over a yeah, tank sure, top. Sure. This one is called Mira. I love the eyelets running across. Uh, it's designed by Elizabeth Smith. And this was also knit in Kestrel originally, 76 yards per skein, uh, 456 yards th uh, through 836. So you'd want to check your sizing. The smallest size was. Uh, designed for 54 inch bust and it goes up to 72 and three quarter well, inch. That's one of those big ones that you probably don't yeah. need the large size. Right. Nice. But you could tell like it drapes like the Duchesne. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think Duchesne, was that originally knit in Kestrel? Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah so the well, yarn Duchesne has was another one that we thought you might, you, you could definitely, could yes, as well. For sure. You know, I feel and like, just keep in mind, it sounds like, oh, I need 10 skeins, but there's only 65 yards in a skein. Right, so it's really not that much. If yardage. your piece hits 600, uh, 650 yards, you're going to need at least 10 skeins. Right. right. Yes, for sure. So make sure you buy the adequate yardage. If you're not sure, you can call the shop. We'd be happy to help you with it. Uh, next one, Flex, designed by Heidi Kermeyer. I really like this piece. I like the um, accent the around the neckline. the neckline. I don't know if it's coming up in the picture, but there's a V-neck. And it's got a uh, shaping that kind of goes down on a diagonal, yeah. almost gives you like a star mm -hmm. and then eyelets going across. Very pretty Very sleeveless cute. top. Again, the top ranges from 456 yards to 836 yards. So you can purchase your yardage accordingly. These are just suggestions. We didn't buy every single pattern, but you can look oh, it up on Ravelry. Mm -hmm. Um, and you'll probably see a lot more information. You could look to see other people who've made the project. Um, 
and even check out yarn suggestions just to see how different people knit it, body type, how it's fitted. You know, some people like it loose, some people like it tight. You do you. Knitter's choice. Next one, Wild Posy. How cute is that? We're talking about texture. That's cute. That's another great one. Yep. Uh, this one is ranging from 32.9 inch uh, finished measurement to 60. So wide range on that. It's got a circular yoke on um, texture. And again, a little cap sleeve. Want to do the last one? That's just Go DK for it. Wait, that was that right? Was it knit doubled? I don't know. Maybe we'll skip this skip last one. one. Let's go to this one. Okay. That's cute. Last but not least, this one is called Allori. Mm -hmm. It's, um, I can't read it backwards. It's designed by Lanre Ojukudu. I hope I'm saying that right. Cute mm -hmm. little um, t-shirt. I like the little eyelet detail down the raglan. It's a short sleeve, super simple, but super adorable. I love the fit. Uh, skill level is advanced beginner. The size the sizes range from extra small to 5XL, which is a 28 to 30 inch bust for the extra small and a 60 to 62 inch bust for the 5XL. The suggested finish measurement is supposed to be one to two inch positive ease. And of course, you do you. And that's it on that. Don't stop. Love all the ideas. Well, that's it. <laughs> that's what we have for you. And that is a lot for the new yarn, Ticklina. It's a lot. Um, I promise to take home the computer and put down, if you're just joining uh, and you didn't have pen and paper, I will include all, all of this in the show notes. Unfortunately, you know, it was erased. You know, what did they say about this, so Jan? Didn't they tell you that these were beginner patterns or easy? Like I'm looking at this one, it says skill level is easy on the Florina. So, you know, this might be a good place to start for two reasons. The yarn is not fingering weight. It's a little thicker, correct? Yes. Um, It'll knit up more it's, quickly. It's talking about a seven and a nine needle. There are some German short rows in it, so it might be a good opportunity to learn a German short row. But I think other than that, it's just your basic tea. Basic tea. So, you know, the stitch pattern is just stockinette, you know, so the, and, it, and it's a free pattern. So, you know, what more could you want? This might be a, a good place to start. If you, you haven't done a sweater or you're thinking of doing it, mm -hmm. right? Anyway. It's great. I think it's wonderful that they've given us support, you know, some free pattern support. Yeah. We don't always get free patterns. Right. So, you know, when you do, it's nice to take advantage. And yeah. even if there's something in your queue that you're thinking of buying the yarn for, if you're already, you know, I'm only allowed to give out the patterns with the purchase of the Ticklina. Sandscorn is very generous and they do a great job with their designing. But if you're at all interested, if you've purchased the yarn, just mention a pattern and I will be happy to email it to you. I even like this one. You know, I like this one. It's got that rounded edge on the bottom, right, Dinah? Mm -hmm. Rounded edge. I could see this even in one solid color without the stripe. Yeah. Or you could just do a two-color block if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. I just like the detail. It's a little more fitted around the top, you know? I mean, I'm not looking at what she's calling for positive ease, but... Um, it's super cute. When Pam and I were looking at the patterns, I actually also thought of the Dingley Dell. Mm -hmm. The Dingley Dell is uh, not for the purpose of using the yarn, but it's equal stripes. And you can actually even stripe out the entire sweater if that's your jam. I think so there's cute. so many, yeah, there are lots of options. Yeah. Uh, definitely excited about the season and getting into short sleeves and yeah. tees and tanks. We're so waiting. this is all, you know, I just said, I <laughs> this said, is all good. I said at school the other day, it's, what's going to happen is it's going to be 90 degrees. Yeah. You're going to wake up In one a day, heartbeat. it's going to be 90 degrees. <laughs> Uh, you know, like thank you guys. 75. Thank you all. Like you guys that. are amazing. Thank you for sticking with us for 100. Yes. So next up is uh, we got a lovely, you know, I feel like our delivery of Moondrake was overshadowed yes, <laughs> with the Santa Scorn delivery. Yes. Um, we got a huge delivery of Moondrake. Rochelle was amazing. She got me um some yarn in quickly. We were running very low on merino linen, which seems to be a, a shop favorite. You guys really like that yarn. Uh, 
I knit my Miserina in the Merino linen. And a lot of you, you know, love this top for the season. And Tammy Gore designed the Trelawney top. We have really done a great job with restocking the Trelawney top. Not with these time. Sure. So we replenished. We came out with some new kits, so you should check them out. Um, this yarn seems to be a fan fave for shawls. I know Hohi Locatelli has designed several. Ambo O'Brien, uh, Tracy from the Grocery Girls, knit the Unwind Shawl. She used this as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It's been a popular yarn, so we have it in some bright new colors. I'll hold it. You want to read? Yep. You want to read the colors? Oh, I don't know if colors? I'll remember the colors. Oh. You probably know better than me, but okay. um, this one is it's electric uh, something. Electric candy land. This one is creamsicle. This one I think is just electric can electric pink candy. This is mint. This is don't tell me, Dana. It's fairy, God fairy godmother. Thank you. <laughs> is this? I don't know. Was this denim? The periwinkle. The next one is denim. Right. That's called rose. Baby Rose, and that's frozen at the end by Dinah. Beautiful. That lovely shade of green. How pretty are they? So anything goes with this. I think last year we did um, Dingley Dells, uh, which is yeah. a beautiful sweater, striping out two colors. Some people like high contrast. Some people like low contrast. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't done kits for that yet. We just started with the Trelawney. We didn't even redo kits for the Unwind Shawl. No, we didn't. There are a lot of hohi shawls. Someone bought two skeins to do the um what's the name of this shawl? The, it was a hohi shawl and it was called the oh my, I'm not gonna remember it now. How great is this palette <laughs> over here? A two skein hohi shawl called the uh it'll come to me. <laughs> Can't think of it. Well, I'll go over the colors. How that's you good. Keep thinking. Okay. No, I'm gonna keep thinking. This one here is navy. Revolve. The revolve shawl. Revolve See? shawl. Thank you. I, I just had to take over. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Um, this one is navy, toffee, eldritch, ash. Love this color. This is a new one. It's called blue slate. It's funny. It looks very gray, but when I bring it closer, you really get the vibe. Oh, you of the can color. see that. It's yeah, like a blue gray. Gorgeous. Mm, beautiful. Uh, shadow truffle and cobblestone now miserina or trelawney to me to me love eldritch love toffee love truffle can you imagine like this like this fabulous oh. even this yep even love. that look at that or i think this most resembles caitlin right 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 toffee with cobblestone now i should correct that the person who bought for revolve today bought suburban stitcher Oh, she bought the sock Coal hat? and cinder. Mm -hmm. Oh. I wonder what that. the yardage is for that shawl. I don't know. Can we should you look use it up. this? I don't know. Well, because again, you have to check. Yeah. yeah. This is right. about 50 or 60 yards less than what Suburban has. So. Right. But this just happens to be nice because it's got 10% linen. Correct. Which makes it really nice and drapey. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people say they like a blend for summer so right now i'm gonna say i don't have anything to show you so you'd have to look this up but there was a great pattern called the anity like the, the name anna a n n a t and it used um the merino linen it had a saddle shoulder detail which is always lovely and it was not oversized it was just a regular fit okay i mean you could always you could do what you want actually but lovely Basic sweater. Basic T. Now I think Short the Bryn T and a T. I think the Bryn had sad saddle shoulders. Oh, does it really? I think so. I think you start with two sat. You know, I think. Don't quote me on that. There it is. Well, she's got that detail. She's got a stitch. De it's hard to see in this because it's a light color. I don't think you can really see no. it. No. Wonder if I could bring it up on my phone. She has a stitch detail that goes down the right sleeve, down the side, kind of comes to a point. And she's got the same detail on the side of the sweater. So look, I'm trying to enlarge. <laughs> <laughs> You've been on the computer too, my thing, lady. <laughs> oh my goodness! I can't believe I just did that. You've been on your computer too much. Who else does that? They think they're on a certain device, and yeah. there's somewhere else. Go from an iPad to a. To I a do that all the laptop. time. 
I've had a laptop yeah, that constantly. Here it is. Let's go to a, let's go to one. Cam is pulling it up on her phone. Hopefully we can get the this best, but to show well. Hi, projects. Phil. And there are plenty of projects online to, to look at here. This is a, I don't know. You Thank think that's you. a good one? That's a great one. That you like that picture? No, that's not a good one. Let's go back. Yeah. How about this guys? Let's do this one. Let's enlarge it a little bit and you'll see the detail that she has. It's on the bottom going to her underarm and on her shoulder. Yeah. Let's go nice and close. You see that bottom detail there that goes up in a V and you see it on her shoulder there. Oops, it's blowing out. You see it on her shoulder there? That does look like a saddle, Dinah. I think that is a saddle. It is. I think it is a saddle. I think it is. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. It's That's another way. Piece. That's a great piece. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice piece, the Bryn. It's another way to, um, you know, a, another construction to a sweater, which is always unique and different. I don't think it's a beginner project, if I'm not mistaken. So you should check the uh, credentials on Ravelry. I'm looking for a friend. Are you looking for Beth? Yes, I am. So I think that's it. We've covered a lot. More coffee, always more coffee, Nancy. <laughs> There's never question. enough coffee. Never, <laughs> never enough. Never enough. Don't worry about I want to do a giveaway. Me. You know, I've been, <laughs> I, Michelle, I'm there going to put it out there. She was very sweet. She's like, you got to celebrate 100. You have to do something. And I try to do these giveaways and we're definitely doing a giveaway today. I haven't decided what or what you have to say. Cheers to you. Thanks, Kimberly. Um. Look how great Beth looks in that. I wonder how much positive you know. It's she, funny. It I doesn't looking, look to me like she did a lot of positive. No, but I that. love the way it fits it her. It fits her beautifully. Beautifully. So that's the thing that Dinah was telling you before. She only made a size two. What is the size two on the Bryn Dinah? 45 and a quarter. See, that's interesting. So do you see the, the positive ease here? Right in here and right in there. I was thinking of going for this look, but when I see it on Beth, I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe I need yeah. to go a little leaner. It yeah. looks so nice when it's just fitted. So you kind of have to look to see. I mean, it looks great on her. It's fabulous. It looks great. And I don't know. I mean, and she I like only used, color. she used the Kestrel, which mm -hmm. was 76 yards, which is about, you know, whatever you figure, maybe ten. eight skeins. She used eight skeins. So maybe you would need nine skeins if you were using nine the or um, nine mm -hmm. or 10, right. But you know, you look it up and do the comparison. Lovely. Love I love it. the way that looks on Beth. Really do. What are you saying? What were you saying before? No, I was talking about 100 and doing the giveaway. Oh, giveaway. Yep. I don't know what we're giving away. You know what you can ask them. You can just say to them, look, when do you, when did you start watching? Or why, you know, I don't want to say why. I mean, it's a knitting podcast. I think it's because it's knitting, right? You like the craft. <laughs> <laughs> That's something you could ask. Like, when did you start watching? Or, I mean, not that well, there's not a right or a wrong answer. It's just information, like, you know, that you could put below about, um, right. you know. Because what Diana and I were talking about earlier was, how have we inspired you? What is it about our podcast that maybe that you keep coming back or to it's watch? Like a, it's like a, it's become like a community, you know, of, um, of knitters, you know, I mean, we have fun. We have the ladies behind us, you know, that's a fun thing to do. And, um, like Dana was saying earlier, sometimes it's like a therapy session, right? We, we <laughs> certainly vent a lot. We vent, we kvetch as they say, right. Um, and you guys inspire us because you tell us what you're doing. You know, when you say, oh, I've made 10 pair of socks this year. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I like Kimberly's <laughs> response. What is your best purchase from the knitting place? That's very that. cute. Or did, or maybe something that you, maybe you were inspired to make or not even to make, to try. You know, maybe it was, a, a, maybe you'd never made a sweater before, right? I mean, there's so many things we've like been really reflecting and I, I can't, think of any one thing I thought about maybe you know Pam is like oh Dinah you can't do this I'm gonna tell or my tell them my idea of what I was thinking let's celebrate the next 100 I can't do it. I know. I can't do it. but you have a very strong point 
I was thinking of maybe trying to come up with a hundred tips, you know, like when the kids like hundred day of school, they would take a hundred count out a hundred sprinkles. Like, what are we going to do? A hundred markers. Right. So I thought maybe a hundred knitting tips. And if each week we shared one knitting tip and then, you know, you gain a little knowledge, mm -hmm. something new, learn something new. Absolutely. Might be something that you already know, but I don't know. It's just an idea. You might hit five out of a hundred that you didn't know before. There you go. We we were thinking you guys might tire out <laughs> from all that information. Well, it's, not even, it's just over. It's over a period of time. Maybe it's hard nice to if you stick put to it, it in a spot, but that doesn't make it. If you this if there's a like David Letterman in a book market, top ten, top ten. <laughs> now that would have been. We should have done a top ten. We should have done a top ten. That we should been have. Fun. That would have been cute. That would have been fun. Well, it's never too late. I think part of it was such a crazy week top for me. 10 reasons why you watched the knitting place podcast <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> so i'm trying to think what david letterman would do that is it pam right one of them could be they're saying they can't hear oh, it's so funny one of them could be uh how late will they be getting on the podcast this week <laughs> Well, listen, it's five o'clock somewhere. It's exactly. 530 somewhere. Exactly. I'm sure we're tuning into someone's time zone. And there you go. I'm sorry if the sound is bad. We apologize. It's hard. It's you know, be the connection not, of some. Someone had mentioned that there's some gusty winds. So it could be just the internet. We're not sure, but we're not changing anything or doing anything. I've learned so much about yarn and patterns. Also, I love how consistent your podcast is and that you always have something new to share. Thank you, Lisa. Well, you guys have to leave these comments because we are going to do one of those random number generators. So please, oh gosh, sound is breaking up. Can anyone hear us? Can you read our lips? No. I wonder. <laughs> Can anyone hear us? No sound. Well, that's interesting. It's got to be the internet, Diana. Your smiles and laughter for the twin. Aw, for the win. Thank you, Karen. <clears throat> I'm not sure why there's no sound. Is that Karen Byron? Yes. She was at Maryland. Karina can hear us. It's interesting. So maybe it's also where everyone else is, you know, maybe it's just the internet around you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Loud and clear. Okay. Karen was at Maryland Sheep and Wool. How did you manage with your foot, Karen? That's right. She was there. To, she had a house. She was there for two nights. I was jealous. Now that's FOMO. FOMO. That's FOMO. That's FOMO. But walking around, I, I would just stay at the house and knit all day. <laughs> I don't have to go anywhere. But we need I could go to Knot House. I could go to Knot House. Yes. That would Kathy be good. Kathy said there was no rain by her. Lucky. Is that right? Yes. So I guess there oh, wasn't rain. Lucky. Well, I don't know how far they are from the festival. But I don't know. Don't know. Yeah. Well, we're going to think about a giveaway. In the meantime, you guys leave a comment. Share with us it's what your memory, it is. whatever it might be. Oh, yeah, you your know. fondest memory. It could be that watching. Never... A... <laughs> Good, I'm gonna say it. <laughs> no. I'm gonna say, there's no sound on the podcast. <laughs> Don't say that. <sighs> we Just... try, we do try, we really do. Leave a comment. We love to hear from you. We like to engage yes. with you. Part of going live, what's so fun is that we read the comments and yep. we go back and forth. Correct. Uh, we love that you guys send us emails, suggestions, all of that stuff. And this is what we talk about with community. Yeah. Uh, well, that's exactly right. Exactly right. You know, it's not just here in the four walls at the knitting place, the brick and mortar. It's it's a lot. And well, that's the thing. You've been able to expand expand further. the wall so much, so to speak, of the brick and mortar to so many. I mean, we have people come in from Australia. Yeah, it's amazing. For, from whatever. And we ship everywhere. I know that it's not as easy to purchase online, but I know that um, we've gotten a few comments, especially from the Canadians, where it's easy for them to purchase online. Right. I need to probably consult someone in how to actually make that shipping easier for us to do. Easier. I don't know if it's going to be easier to do that, Diana. I don't know how to segment it per country. Uh -huh. I know that, you know, we had an issue today where. We well, that was shipped. just, yeah, that was the, the postal code, though, I think. No, but it's also even just the value of shipping. Oh, that's, cost. well, that's right, yes. too. Yeah, yeah, that's so right. yeah. it's very hard to gauge what a customer might purchase, what you might purchase, and how far it's going, yeah. and how much does the package weigh. You know, if only I could look into a hey, crystal ball. we just like to knit. <laughs> no one said we knew how to ship. Exactly. <laughs> no one said we knew how to use, you know, a computer, but we just like to knit. 
so intense. Someone, I have to tell a funny story today. We, I was talking to her now. I can't remember her name. Cynthia, maybe it was. Cynthia, if I'm wrong, forgive me. Remember, we were laughing because I called her about something. And um, she said, okay, she needed an extra stain of yarn. So she went to give me her credit card information. She said, oh, I have to get out of my, oh, love get up this. from my yarn chair. I said, I am so jealous. Are you knitting right now? You're sitting in your yarn chair. And she said, she calls her yarn chair, lazy girl. You know, lazy boy. Yeah. The finest. So it's a lazy girl. <laughs> How fabulous. I said to Dinah, now that, that's FOMO. <laughs> Can you, like, I only wish I had one designated area right. that was my yarn chair. Can you imagine? Imagine you just sitting there like it's maybe 1.30 in the afternoon and you're I sitting wish. in your yarn chair knitting. Sipping oh, this iced coffee that Pam so made jealous. me in my yarn chair. I like imagined what I have an ottoman. Would I have a blanket on my lap? You'd have a crochet like, blanket handy so that in case you were chilly. <laughs> well, maybe not crochet. It could be any any crafted crochet. blanket. Yeah. Um, but in any event, um, I guess that's what we were thinking about today when we were thinking about 100 episodes. How many years has it been since we're podcasting, Dana? 2016? No, 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 no. Not I have no idea. I don't, I don't even know when our first podcast was. Guys, everyone's leaving so many. They're like jumping all the comments. Uh, how do we see those comments? The you know, you can, no, no, you can go back. If you go back at home one day and you, you're looking at the podcast, there is a thing where you can bring the chat down. Right, but how do we keep those people? So I tried to do that, what and there were the only heck? like 10 comments. Oh, they Did didn't stay? They didn't all oh, stay. Oh, I don't know. I saw them there when I was looking at the podcast for something. If you want to be included in the giveaway, please leave a comment after the On, podcast. After the podcast, yeah, under in the comments. Yes, mm -hmm. under comments. PayPal or Shopify does international. Oh, we talked about that. Diana, right, so we? I do. So you do PayPal. I do PayPal. So the one so one of the ways that I ship to Australia or I ship it's to PayPal. Switzerland yeah. is e if you email me and I'm by the computer, I can remove the inventory right away and just say, you know, contact you the next day and let you know what shipping is, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You can always, if you're worried about losing the yarn, make up a fake address in the United States and say you need to ship to London. And I will adjust the shipping and, you know, we'll just do a PayPal or a price adjustment when we go through the getting the information for the customs forms and all of that. So I do my best. I'm not perfect. I'm still a work in progress, especially when it comes to technology <laughs> and thing. Um, but, yeah, we try our best and, yeah, we appreciate all of you. And even if you don't buy from us and you just enjoy Enjoy our company. Community, yeah. Yes, it's always fun. Exactly. We love to share our knowledge, share our tips and tricks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yep. That's what it's all about. Yes. Who doesn't love to watch a knitting podcast? And I love learning from you guys. Like Susan, thank you. I haven't watched the video yet. I just brought in, you know, so we're talking about helical knitting and uh joining in different dialogues like i learned this from susan there's a you know i didn't know it was out there but you could do three, three balls, color yeah. helical knitting whoa <laughs> well i'm lucky if i can handle two <laughs> well you know me and my tangles so know, i'm scared to throw in a I third i know i took great care and like in the shawl to like cut and weave in my ends so that i didn't have this like hairy mess but yeah yeah we love learning from you guys as well so it's really been great so thank you Thank you. Thank you. I guess we'll sign off right now. Correct. We'll see you next week for sure. Yes. And we'll have a winner and we'll figure out what we're going to give away. There you go. There you go. Hugs right back at you. And thank you for all your kind words. This means so much. We're going to end the stream, but I want to read all the comments. There and you if go. you have anything special for the uh, giveaway, please leave a comment below. Thanks, thank everyone. Have a great week. Bye. Bye-bye.